Hi guys, it's Nat here. Hope you're all doing well. I'm on for Friday book haul. I haven't had one for a while, so I thought I would get on and show you the bits and pieces that I have grabbed um, in the last what, month, maybe. Um, it's a bit of a random lot. So I'll start with these two. Now, I got these purely for the covers because they've got such a nice wide spine so I shouldn't have to make a new spine for them. Just reinforce the one that's in there and they should be good to go. Uh, they're in good nick and they seem like a decent height. Just seeing if I've got an A4 piece of paper somewhere. Well, they're perfect that way. And they're pretty spot on. Might have to cut off a little bit. So I have to cut the edges off just a little bit, but height-wise, they are absolutely perfect. So I'm wrapped with that. And they are dictionaries. They're compact Oxford English dictionaries. They are not illustrated ones, so I will keep the inside papers there, but otherwise I will probably recycle the pages. Um, I do have a number of dictionaries which I've kept for dictionary meanings and that more vintage style ones. So I don't need any more dictionary pages in here. But yes, great covers. I have this Royal Horticultural Society Encyclopedia of Roses. I probably have plenty of this sort of thing too, but now that I'm doing more collaging, um, I thought I would grab this one because it has stacks and stacks of pictures of roses and a lot of them are nice ones that you could fussy cut quite, quite simply as well. So this is 2003, this one. But yeah, stacks of pictures and look, nice and easy to fussy cut your singular roses out. She put on the heads of ladies as lots of people do, create hats out of them for ladies and that sort of thing. Beautiful. I'm sure I've had this book a few times, but <laughs> I keep harvesting them to get rid of the bulk and then bringing more in. <sighs> and because I've got inspection coming up, I'm doing a lot of harvesting and organising to try and fit all my books into my bookcases for the inspection. Not that I have to. Luckily, the um, agent is very understanding. And I always show her my craft areas and I'm a little bit worried and I say, oh, you know, it's really messy. And she goes, yes, but it's an organised mess. So she doesn't mind. <laughs> I'm glad she thinks so. Oh, tell you. <laughs> if only she saw how much work I had to do to get it an organised mess for her. Beautiful book though, that one. I got this Star Wars. Don't really need it, but... Yeah, and I don't necessarily like using these sort of popular branded things in my, um, the things I make, but I do, like again with the collaging, there are a couple of bits and pieces in here, like even just these rays and that, that I thought might be a bit of fun. And, you know, background with fire and that sort of thing, this page. So I think I might harvest bits like that out. I mean, you could use the people in that, but I probably wouldn't. It's a bit like Disney. I don't like using a lot of their stuff, and I'm pretty sure they don't like using, you using a lot of their stuff. Although I did grab one Disney book that I am determined to use the pictures out of. Okay, and then at the bookshop, there was a note on these books, which apparently were hanging around for me for ages. And the lady, looks like she said she was going to ring me. She possibly did ring my mobile. And I saw that I had had a phone call from an unknown number. So I blocked it. <laughs> because the only people that ever tend to ring me on my mobile that I don't have their number is, um, oh, you know, unpaid toll and... <laughs> yeah, the computer has a problem, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I don't use my mobile, so, yeah. So, but they are blank books, and there's three of them, and they're very solid. 
beautiful. They're glossy pages, but they're just blank books. How cool is that? It was lovely of her to think of me. I think they're, I think they're stuck in, but I'll have a closer look. That is the middle of a signature somewhere around here. Oh, they're sewing in. Awesome. Much prefer that. That makes a big difference because what I might do is some altered books with them. I can remove a whole pile of pages that I can use. Could use them and do the use them on the jelly plate or do some other stuff on them like that. Maybe even alcohol inks because they're that glossy. Um, yeah, I might do that. Remove heaps of pages and make altered books with them. They're quite big, but that's all right. Or even some collage books for myself. Maybe I'll do that with these bigger ones. This one covers not in the best condition, but still. Just full of beautiful pages. And knowing that they're sewn in is wonderful. So it's so lovely that she thought of me for those. Much appreciate that. I grabbed this, Ophelia's World. The Memoirs of a Parisian Shop Girl. <laughs> These have great pictures in them if you ever want to make a teddy bear journal. 1984. Now, I did use one of these previously for a, a teddy bear. I think it was a teddy bear Christmas chocolate themed journal. And it was so much fun to make. And they're very cool pictures. And look, it's got some beautiful sort of Victorian style bits and pieces as well. <laughs> Whoever makes these have way too much time on their hands. <laughs> and they're cute though. This was interesting. Oh, please don't make me say that. Salmon Trakesminster. Salmon Trakesminster. Monster, oh, I can't read that. As Feninja Teal Salmon Streaks Brodery. Russian or something, maybe? I have no idea. World copyright. So it is an embroidery book. Love it, look at it, beautiful. Nice landscape, a little big, you'd have to cut them down a bit probably, but they are gorgeous. Nice vintage, it's lovely that they've got it in color as well. It's beautiful, it's like hard ringer or something. That is gorgeous. This is Invitations. Uh, so it is, I think, a um, flower arranging book. I don't know why. I'm a bit of a sucker for these things. 1996. Some I find really pretty. That will be nice to add to some projects. I do like if I find ones that are nice to fussy cut when I fussy cut them for the um, it's a pad paper for my collaging. These ones are a bit strange. I'll probably fussy cut this one. They're very odd ones. So yeah, if I find any that are particularly pretty that I might put in journals, I'll grab them out. And then ones that I think I can fussy cut easy enough, I cut out for um, my collaging. There's not a lot in that one, but there's a couple. There is this 
now I don't know how to pronounce his name properly either. Gorgun? Gorgun? Georgian? Something like that. Someone will tell me. Gagwin? Gorgun, I think. Romantic Modernist is. 2023 calendar printed on 240 GSM art paper. Suitable for framing. This beautiful paper. I think what I'll do with that, I've seen um, Christina's shack. I don't know if she followed someone else, but I've seen a number of people make um, glue books and art books and that out of calendars. And I have kept a pile of calendars to do that sort of thing with. This one would be good. bit smoother on that side but it should be pretty good for art stuff and that so I'll definitely have to make a little art journal mixed media thingamajig with this I think I'm not a huge fan of the prints but that's all right you can always fold the pages gesso over that so that you can create something just have that as a picture on that side you can always alter them too beautiful paper so definitely worth using it then my son grabbed out all of these this England magazines for me 1992 they're all around the same date by the look they don't have a lot in them they remind me of oh what are they called are these little green magazines I was grabbing all the time yeah, can't remember, but they remind me of them anyway. <laughs> they have similar pictures. Yeah, they're, they're almost exactly the same, so I reckon they might be the same author. Because they had all of this sort of thing too, but they were smaller books. I could harvest some of the pictures with the people and that. So I'll go through and have a look. I did buy one of these recently in a oh, vintage magazines um i got some vintage magazines recently off of someone on marketplace and there was one of these but for me i would only use them for a bit of collage fodder really they're nice cigarette cards a few nice vintage pictures so yeah grabbed a few of those uh, Beautiful Britain, 2006. There's definitely some all right collage fodder in that. And another This England. And another This England. Uh, Flowers and Fruit Stained Glass Pattern Book. I was keeping a whole lot of the stained glass pattern books. I don't know if I still am or not, but I thought Flowers and Fruits, I think that would be nice. I always think you can colour them in or you can use them as a template to do a collage. They are a bit like colouring patterns, aren't they? Could even watercolour practice a bit of painting on them. It's an idea too. I need all the help I can get. Now, I always grab these. I think there were two of them, but I'm not sure where I've put the other one. Uh, activity and Collector's Albums. Uh, they get put out in the recycling, but they're not recyclable. Um, the cover is, but they have these. They're adhered with and stuck together with these metal bits and that, so that's not recyclable, nor is the plastic that's in them. So I do tend to bring them home. I pull the cards out. I usually keep them if they're animals or something. Oh, these are interesting. Oh, I like that they do all this foldy stuff. It's an idea. I might keep one as a template to make something like that for the journals, although I'm not really into all this fancy stuff for my journals. Sometimes I tire of all this, like, two-flip, ten-pocket stuff, you know. <laughs> I mean, if it's 
practical in the journal, then all right, but yeah, sometimes I think I put too much unpractical, impractical stuff into my journals, so. Um, but yeah, I'll take all of them out. I can reuse these pockets um, to hold ephemera in, so I tend to keep all of those. Make things with them for your journals as well. So that's what I'll do with that, and then recycle the rest of it. A paper craft book by Pamela Woods. Looks a bit retro. Love this page, so I will keep that. And that one. 1980 for this one. I don't think there's a lot in there, but I will flip through and see if there are any creations that I might like to try. like the colours in that page. I'd probably use that in a journal. And this little picture. Templates. Yeah, I don't think there's too much of the crafting, which is my sort of thing. This is children's spaces from zero to 10. I thought I would just look through this for some collage water. I do, however, keep a lot of book covers that have these flip outs because I think they're nice and sturdy and I can cover them and use them as pages in journals or pockets. So yeah, definitely a bit of large fodder in that with the kids little bits and pieces it's nice and yellow don't know if I could wake up to that in the mornings I suppose if you if you were a child it would be all right but that would blind me That's a great page. It's a background page. Oh, there's the other one. Are they the same sort of cards? No, these ones are dinosaurs. I think I've got a set of them already. But you can all alter these nicely. They're just cardboard, so quite nice to alter as well. This board, which is stickers go on, it's probably removable too. This big book from me to you, making and giving memorable gifts. Beautiful coloured start page. Nice bits to fussy cut. Yeah, they'll be great for collaging. So I think I'll harvest that one. It seems like a waste to just harvest bits and pieces out of a book like this, but they are going to the recycle bin anyway. Um, so I harvest what I want and then the bits I don't want go back into the recycling. Um, these were likely sitting on the shelf for a year or so and hadn't been bought. So that's why they end up in the recycle bin because they've got to make room for newer books that hopefully will get bought, which is understandable. So I've got the next lot of books here and I'm sucking on a mint. So if I'm talking funny, that's why. My mouth keeps getting dry and gluey, which makes it really hard to talk. Thought I'd share that with you because sharing is caring. Okay, so this is the new International Illustrated Encyclopedia. There were four of these, so I grabbed them because I'm a sucker for an encyclopedia. Yeah, I can't tell you how many sets of encyclopedias I have harvested. And I can tell you harvesting a set of encyclopedias takes a long time and a lot of work, especially the ones that have the staples that go all the way through. 
And I probably still have a good, you know, four sets worth at least or something here. Uh, there's one or two that I can't bear to harvest because they're so sort of vintage that I um, just want to keep them forever. But they take up a lot of space. Okay, so stop talking. I've got nice embossing on these, but I don't know. I actually might keep the spines at least because I quite like those. I have harvested a set of these, I think. But don't they look so nice and old? 1954, this one. So they're illustrated. But I love the little black and white illustrations. More men's heads for me to chop up. Or in ladies, that's nice. I don't think you get colour at all in this one. Oh yeah, just as I say that, it's always something to prove me wrong. They're great pictures. So I will likely just harvest these. I always want to hang on to books like this, but once you end up with about eight sets of them in your house, you realise that there's plenty enough to not hang on to it all. <laughs> Look at the colours. Oh, that will be great. Uh, no, the lovely Tracy Fox put out an art kit, an art-themed kit. And I definitely want to use that sometime, and these will go in that perfectly. It's another thing, if you don't harvest something like this and then sort the pages, you never remember that these bits are where they are when you do want them. I'm making a concerted effort at the moment to sort my papers out properly. <laughs> it's taken me forever to. Oh, if you only knew. <laughs> yeah. So we'll have a quick flick through the other couple. see much due to the way I'm holding it. I'm trying to stop if I see anything. There's a lot of fun stuff actually but Ooh. nudity. Always uh, worth grabbing your encyclopedias that have the illustrations because you never quite know what you're going to get and usually with the coloured pages there's usually not many but a couple of them are the best. I get my best pages out of my encyclopedias for the middle of my journals and that. And I'd say most of my themed journals, they're all pretty well themed these days, have bits and pieces from encyclopedias as far as butterflies and that sort of thing, mushrooms. And then recently I've been doing a fair bit with the men that I cut out of them and chopping the heads off and adding them places. love it. I just love doing this. I, every night almost I sit out there and harvest books and look at pages and get all inspired. If only I could make as much as what I'm inspired to make.
Yeah, they're a great set, those ones. Next, there was half of someone's Christmas card. They must have recycled that by the looks and cut it out of another one. Yeah, because it's crooked along that end. But it's beautiful pictures, so I'll try and reuse that. This Australian Railway Enthusiast from 67. There's some cool pictures. This one will be quick and easy to harvest. That's great with all the steam. The Rebel Cadets by Charles Gleig. Gleig? Gleig, I reckon. Great cover. Might have to try and resurrect that somewhat. Very old. <laughs> Looks like my level of expertise in drawing. So it doesn't have a date. Well, I think this is antique. Very close to, that's for sure. the cover it's got some beautiful pictures in there got some of these ads at the back I didn't have a date back there did it I will look up this one A few pages of adverts, which is nice. Beautiful. Another antique, I think. <laughs> I'd say so. Uh, Royal. School series. Royal something or other. It'd be nice to try and fix that up a bit. If I can turn the pages. Fifth reading book. Coloured that in. It's definitely an antique. Yeah, it looks like all the pictures have been coloured in, which is a bit of a shame. Definitely have to have a bit of a read of this one. Oh, this is another one of these sort of encyclopedia star books, I think. I think. Or is it a Oh, yeah, the Wonder Book of Knowledge. I think the cover was really bad, and so I took it off and left it there. I think there's a bit of mould on there, so I'll just take out whatever pages are on the inside that I might like. I think these are the 50s, somewhere around that. I've harvested a pile of these previously as well. Some cool pictures. That's great. Look at the colour. Lovely. That's what I mean by in your sort of encyclopedia type books, you tend to get these pages, which are just gorgeous. They're my favourites. So I love to use them as a centre spread in my journals. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this was the Disney book that I couldn't help but grab to use. I've got a soft spot for Bambi, so I might make a little golden book journal sometime. Some of these are a bit blurry, but otherwise I thought some of them were quite cute. And that fit all right folded or something. This Space Landscape Design Showcase magazine. Um, thought I would harvest this for glue booking. That's great. Love the cover on this, The Gentle Heritage by Francis E. Crompton. That's a gorgeous picture with the children. I have to look up this one. Don't think it's antique though. as many other pictures in it either but that start one is very nice the pages are in great condition nice and thick now my son found this one for me too Alice in Wonderland the early reader series beautiful cover the back's not in the best condition I think it'd be nice to reuse this cover I've not seen this one before. All the pictures are in black and white, but they're great pictures too. Some of the Alice in Wonderlands that I find, Alice just does not look right to me. <laughs> so I don't like those ones. Nice big writing too. So this would be great to grab some little um, lines out of for your ephemera. So that was a great find. My son doesn't tend to let me go through the books much when we're doing the recycling anymore. I used to do it on my own, so I had plenty of time to go through them, but now we do it real quick and yeah, my son doesn't let me get much of a look in. I think he doesn't want me bringing too many home, but he pulls out the ones that um, he thinks I might like. And then when we go to tip it in the um, skip bin, <laughs> I'm forever getting him to pull ones back out. Yeah. Uh, this is ready to use borders on layout grids. They're copyright free designs printed on one side. So I can do what I like with these. So I'm going to have a bit of fun with those. I will scan them in. They would make quite nice journal card borders, some of them, and page borders. I've got, I've managed to find a few of these copyright free books. Um, so I'm going to have to have a lot of fun with them sometime. So there's that one. And then I think this one is copyright free too. This was a great find. Again, my son spotted it. Victorian spot illustrations, alphabets and ornaments from Porrett's type catalogue. A pictorial archive of 1,460 illustrations. Let's have a look. It's got a copyright. Up to 10 illustrations may be reproduced on any one project or in any single publication. Free and without special permission. Wherever possible, include a credit line. So that's cool. So I can use up to 10, say, in a journal. Or on a digital or something, I would say. Oh, cool. Animals, birds.
it's always great when you find these because you know that you can use, you know, when the copyright details are so clear, you know what you can and can't use makes it a lot easier to have a bit of fun. Oh, that's what I love, the alphabet. Illustrated alphabet, that is gorgeous. So that would be great fun to use. Just copy one of them and use it on all the stuff in your um, digital or whatever. Just another one with flowers and botanicals. So they were very cool finds. Oh, and then I've got one more. The smallest one. I have, don't think I've ever seen one of these. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's the tiniest little golden book I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's the saggy baggy elephant. This one will just be staying in my um, collection, I think, because it's so cute. Doesn't seem to have the like addition or anything like that in there. It's very weird. But like it looks legit, doesn't it? Special miniature versions of Golden's best loved children's stories. Yeah, so that's really cute. So I hope you enjoyed that. Have a wonderful weekend ahead and I will see you soon. Bye.